Um, uh, Vivienne uh, asks the question in uh, relation to pastel painting, which past masters in pastel have the visual impression approach? And can you comment on the differences between pastel and oil painting in regard to the Boston School approach? I'll try to do both of those things sort of intermix, so stay tuned. Uh, I have a feeling at the very end I'll have to talk about the difference between oil and, um, and pastel, but um, if there is, you know, actually any. Um, so uh, let me um, just pop up onto the screen here a, um, a little show, if I can find it. What have I done with it? There it is. A presentation that I typically do for my pastel class. The pastel painting. There you go. So let's Quentin de la Tour. Here's, here's an early guy. Um, uh, well before the Impressionists. Very typical of what was going on with pastel. Um, you'll notice that these gentlemen, this gentleman is already a pastelist. Uh, he's not locked into this idea of pastel -y pictures. Although, I mean, you can see he's using very strong darks and all the rest. So it's not, past, a lot of people think pastel means, means light, and it doesn't. But, but basically his orientation is, is, is like a, an angs. Uh, you're drawing a head, you're drawing a nose eyes. And uh, I wonder if we can look closer, say, at the eyes of this middle picture here. I guess I can't. But um, if I could zoom in on that, I would, because you'd be able to see, and in, in the future ones you'll be able to see anyway, I think, that they, when they draw an eye, they draw lines around the eyes, and that's really kind of a giveaway, uh, very different. And you'll see that difference in, uh, in Velasquez, uh, the difference we're talking about now. So between a, um, a more academic approach, including, you know, the da Vinci thing, which is sort of the beginning of all that stuff, where the, um, in spite of the fact that the guy is really the beginning point for the real, the science of appearances, the science of seeing, um, you know, not an absolute beginning, but he really does begin to bring bring the language, bring 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 words to observations, and uh, which becomes enormously useful as a base for the future of painting. So, and I'm talking about Da Vinci. So, but he still is a guy who's drawing an eye by drawing lines all around all the aspects of the eye, as if it were an anatomy lesson, as if he had to draw everything he knew was there. That difference is pretty big, isn't it? So here's Leotard, and I, I'm showing you this one because this shows that re, re, sort of remarkable orientation around uh, local color that seems to go with, uh, you know, even terrific painters like Ang. Uh, the, uh, when you're working in the uh, outline of object mo uh, modality, you know, you're drawing uh, uh, the, the, the woman's dress, you're drawing the, um, you know, the, 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 the ribbon around the, around the throat there, and, and each one of those objects has made the color it needs to be made, and it's drawn shall we say, in that color. As I said, a different orientation, as I would tend to say always, talking about Impressionism, a different orientation from someone who's searching out color notes and making sure that every area has red, yellow, and blue, and that they're all well, re well regulated. Uh, you know, and that's a little different from picking, say, the color of the head shall be this, and then painting it all up, drawing it all up real nice. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, you see those enormous, I wouldn't be showing you these if I didn't think highly of them up to a point. Um, some of the defects in, in that kind of work uh, show up here. He's not the be even beginning to be the kind of a dedicated soul that Ang is to, to, to line, to the spectacle of line play, uh, to the, to the uh, aesthetic of line play. But, um, and it, yeah, his proportions it look very good, and his, um, uh, you know, his, uh, the visual order elements, as such as they are, uh, to appear good, you know. Uh, it's, it's professional work. And this is Vigie Lebrun. Uh, she seemed to have begun her career, rather, in pastel. I don't know if she wholly did, but that one on the left is a portrait of her, I believe, an early one. Um, and these are other ones, uh, again, in that way of working uh, that is the, you know, is tied to the academic. And you can judge for yourself. I'm just giving you these factual, this factual information. These are the, those, these are who those guys are. Uh, Chardin really winds up being sort of, sort of the beginning of something else, although in, these, in this case here, it doesn't look that much different. Uh, the, um, but you know, and if you heard me talk about um, Tarbell and others in the Boston School, Chardin was one of their, uh, you know, godfathers there, you know, one of their great, uh, one of their greats, you know, the pantheon that they would uh, have you worship in. <laughs> would have included Chardin. 
largely because the guy was just such a, a good observer of nature. And um, but I, these in these shots here, uh, which again the internet doesn't give you really the right sense of they they appear to be more brilliantly lit in a certain way than they are pastels can do that but you know they almost make it look like this is a boston school pastel <laughs> painting light effects and it isn't that bright in nature um, and one of the weaknesses of pastel is that it um, it's not that it isn't bright it's just that it isn't um, um it you know pastel tends to fall off a bit off the canvas and so you begin to get whatever your ground was you get more and more of that involved so there are things about pastel there if you um, and there's Gruz, who was truly the, uh, sort of speak, the com he was the um, yeah, competition for um, Chardin. And, uh, you know, a bit of a well-connected guy. Uh, but this, again, is the other model, very distinctly the other model. Um, and so let's get down. And, and by the way, there, there, this, this, um, these are pastels by uh, uh, Millet. And as you can see, they're barely more, at least one on the right, is barely more than a colored uh, drawing, uh, some of which we did with Gamel. Uh, at least I did uh, under Gamel. But, um, but there's still a remarkable sense in, uh, in the left melee of him being, a, um, a, big, being a, a real eye, a real observer in an impressionist kind of a way, including uh, that sense of broken color and all those things. In this particular picture and some of the other ones, there's some of these... Uh, twilight pictures at the at the uh, MFA. If you haven't seen them, that's the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. It's worth your time to look at these things. He's done these little bunnies on a hillside, and the incredible atmosphere, the incredible control of values. Uh, you know, one of the things you're seeing is you can do these. For some people, these things land halfway between uh, drawing and painting. You know, uh, and of course, Millet was heavy on the drawing side. But when you get to Manet, you're not talking about the impressionist meaning people making effects and working from effects and uh, not worrying themselves to death over whether the eye is made correctly, you know, whether it's drawn all the way around. This is the beginning of that idea of working from the spot. And in the early version of what was called the tonal painting, uh, the idea was to put down a spot and, uh, and then work with that spot. So a spot of color, you know, it wind up being a spot. So the, the mass of hair on this gentleman might be considered to be a spot. Uh, but but obviously a dot of an eye that's a spot. Uh, but there's there are these this idea of the uh, of the mass uh, beginning to dominate over the line, the mass with a single edge with a dominant edge. So when you're looking at a passage like this thing here, you'll notice the dominance of an edge of an edge, right, of a particular edge, and and the willingness to to diminish to the point of paying, you know ignoring or uh, dismissing uh, secondary things. Uh, very typical of the visual order kind of painting that's beginning to evolve here. And again, Manet uh, is side by side rather with Carol Duran, a number of people starting to, to work out of, the, out of the idea of the tone, or, which is another word for values and the value mass. But that's the beginning of the Impressionist way of thinking. Uh, you'll see that it actually has a different feeling. The other kind actually always does look a little droy. Let me go up a little bit if I can to these. Uh, they have a tendency to be droy. They tend to be droy, meaning they draw the outline of a face and all that sort of thing. And they're heavy on the drawing. And you'd say some people would say, "Well, that's the." Uh, let's get to this first one. That's the uh, that's the beauty of it. I mean, don't you want good drawing? And it's not really that it's good drawing. It's just this is a believe it or not, this is actually a style compared to nature itself. When you start getting to the Manet thing, people are beginning to say, look at nature, look at nature. And uh, that's, that becomes, as it were, the new style. It becomes the, um, but what happens is you begin to incorporate uh, the world as a whole, the, the impression as a whole. So there's no issue with, for example, having a sharper edge or a higher contrast here than anywhere else in the face, or even down here having stronger effects in other places where you'd find you find uh, there'd be a reduction in this idea of falsifying edges. I mean, these guys are these guys are very good at uh, truthful relationships of edge, among other things. So, uh, and that's significantly different from the say the grooves we were showing up above, where there's this tendency to soften everything into this remarkable, you know, I don't know what you want to call that sort of soggy fusion, but it's like a, I, I think of it as a false unity, and I don't think it's attractive even a little bit, but I think it weakens uh, pictures. Uh, 
or I consider it, frankly, I guess a prettification. I find it unattractive for that reason. But on the other hand, some people find this stuff uh, aggressive and harsh. Um, on the other hand, you can see the idea here is actually visual order and, and popping the, uh, the effects in their proper relationships to each other. And I do mean the silhouettes at edges. Now here's Degas using pastel, and, and there's nobody who, who has probably defined, you know, it's almost like Sargent defining watercolor. Uh, uh, Degas really, really makes this medium. Uh, and he makes it sing. I mean, it, and it's such a nice medium because he's, for him, because he's coming from drawings very much like a, uh, an academic would. And yet he has this chance, this opportunity to explore in a very harmless way. I often find Degas difficult in the paintings because he seems to be struggling with his paint skills. And, and there's so many of the paintings that look like they might have been okay at one point that are just blotchy and, and uh, troubling, troubling in their, uh, in their surfaces. Um, but there's no ambiguity. There's none of that stuff in these uh, uh, Degas as, the, as he searches out the relationships. For example, of the, uh, let's see if I can do this. See these oranges in here. And there's the lightest version of that. His, this is Degas saying, what's more beautiful than the same color side by side with a different value of, this, of, of another color, right? Uh, but there's this and this. And then you jump over and you find yourself in this world of these other kinds of oranges that are all playing to this, right? And so he, with the pastel, you grab the pastel and you while it's in your hand, you notice that there's some of it over here, you can just set it in there. You feel far less uh, 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 intimidated of doing that uh, if you have, with a pastel, if you don't have other medium issues, uh, which oil brings. So one of the advantages, here again, this is that two different values of the same color side by side doing something delightful. And then the distribution uh, in these various ways of, the, of that element of color. So that's one of the great beauties of, of uh, uh, color. Now, you can also see, I mean, so much so often Degas picked on for his lack of uh, drawing. Now, he's a great draftsman. And this is actually great draftsmanship, so don't even think for a second that I don't think it is. But he isn't one of these guys. He, he's one of these guys who does know, much like Ang said, that if he goes and starts noodling it all up, he's going to start destroying the magic, which for him was going to be in the color and the light. Uh, but so... I often say of him that what he did is he took what Monet had to offer and uh, and made an art form out of it, you know, which is the broken color and the and then he but he began he's like this model he's like a, a rug weaver, I think he refers to himself that way, where you see these colors being woven through an entire painting, uh, you know these 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 remarkable uh, golden browns over here picking up through the painting, not you know and and by the way are being alluded to throughout the entire painting. Uh, the orange notes, the you know, all the players playing that way. <laughs> so he's taking, and it's all, in every area, it looks like he's got red, yellow, and blue. Whether he does it consciously or not, he's got enough different colors in here for there to be a pickup in multiple places around the painting. So he thought of it like a weaving process. Uh, by the way, and he's not intimidated of using rich and dark uh, colors. Here's Mary Cassatt, and... Uh, who's in, you know, significantly the same family. This does indicate that up to this point still, not, not including Manet, that the, um, that the uh, pastelists were uh, still on line into uh, mass. But it really is rather a, a rapid process. They may throw a few lines around, but then they put down a line and mass, in, and mass it into a mass and mass it into an effect. And so you'll see more of that. But... Um, uh, nevertheless, uh, this is uh, just another beautiful example where, of how, especially in this one, of how the colors are beginning to be thought about, how, how the distribution starts. She's beginning to set these things up and looking around to see what color will go to what color in that uh, game of distribution. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, again, they're far more dedication to light in the Impressionist mind and to, um, and to um, color itself. Uh, and, and America saw this as beautiful as any, any of them. Uh, these are paintings I'm just showing you because they're Boston School with the De Camp on the right, Tarbell on the left. That um, um, I haven't seen the one on the left in person, uh, and I don't have, I, I, I'm taking it on somebody else's word that that's a pastel. It does look like it, by, by the way, for sure. But, um, but in both cases, you can see what they're doing, how much more attention they're paying to that play of uh, in the case of the tarbell, that play of color and color relations, he once complained about 
Sargent for painting a gray wall gray instead of painting a gray wall with the color movements in the gray. And uh, but here you can see what he's doing. He's got he's got a, a secondary light like the lamp I put in here sometimes. So he's got a secondary probably artificial light, and he's got a primary daylight thing going on. So you can see the cool half of her face, the warm half of her face. Well, uh, that's one of the, to be able to do that does require you to have the facility to to change to keep searching out color at the expense of a drawing and to, to establish an academic drawing and try to do this in it is a considerably more difficult feat than, than uh, to search out color and find the drawing by the effect, uh, which is a discussion on another day. Anyway, but that gives you an idea that these guys, I mean, pastel, people painting a pastel aren't that much different from each other. But at this point, you at the point you get to these guys, you've gotten pretty far away from the, what would have been the, you know, sort of the moral standards, uh, you know, of the academic world. Um, and these guys are very, very characteristically doing in pastel what they do in paint, and that is painting from effects, from leading effects. In the visual order, you know, the dominance of effects like, let's just talk about this, that, that effect right there. And I'm talking about a light effect, right? See, so the dark meets the light with a relatively sharpish edge. There's an effect on the other side of that nose, but this is like a key effect. Now, this uh, is a significant effect, and spots down here, you'll see similar things like this, say, or other aspects. And when those things come up, these guys are actually using these things as placeholders and establishing their effects that way. They're, they're placeholders of effect as well as placeholders on the page. Uh, but they help to establish the uh, values and the colors of the, uh, of the entire thing. Uh, some of these might have been done as studies for paintings. Uh, and there, here's Paxson. Now, Paxson is, like, clearly, as I've said before, he's, he is the, uh, <laughs> quote, Boston uh, School uh, academic. He is the Jerome background guy who, who certainly uh, uh, respected line, uh, in, including the articulation of, of what he, you know, in the nose, mouth, face, that sort of thing. Uh, he's more, far more of a line guy, meaning he's much more of an academic, but I'm showing you anyway. And on the left, you can see the hail. Where here again, he, he may have, some, he clearly does have some lines thrown around in this thing, but now he's searching out the color and, 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 and trying to, 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 establish the color theme, the color scheme, color theme, and the main effect, uh, establishing effects like these, this drama down here. He's trying to get this thing strongly dominating the picture as it should. I'd love to have seen this one worked up. Again, no fear of color and a broken color and uh, search. And Dewing was one of those guys who showed with the 10, and here, these are pastels, and I'm guessing these are all pastel studies for for the, some of those outdoors pictures that he did um, with multiple figures. Um, so um, a different use, uh, uh, you know, this is actually the, the study use. But you can see he's oriented very similarly, not dominated by outlines, but dominated by mass, by spots of effect. And, um, and uh, of course, he's always there with the grand movements of color and things like that. But yeah, these are, these are, as I said, they're sketches, they're studies for. And pastel is a really nice medium for that. Um, and Whistler, I just showed, I, I don't know, that there, there may be other Whistlers, but I, uh, and I don't know if this is a memory study or what it is, but uh, my guess is that it's a memory study in which he's searching out a, a color scheme. But it is an interesting thing to see a pastel in which there's, um, this, this thing is going on <laughs> with... Uh, uh, the idea, like very like what Degas was doing, of, of establishing a, a color plan. What color would this be if that has to be this color? What would that, you know? And so you can see how beautifully, how beautifully these pinks up here, whether they're a background or not, I don't know in the first place, paper, but whatever these are doing, they're really beautifully related to the blue, to the couple blues that you're seeing in there. And there's that search then for the yellow and whatever else you're going to need uh, to be in keeping. If you remember his peacock room, that whole there's such a discussion about getting the colors right for that entire room. This is, you know, people say that this is decorative. Well, music is decorative too. In a sense, music. What does music do for anybody? You know, in one sense. But uh, I mean, it certainly elevates the soul. But the decorative aspect of painting is simply color harmony, things like that. And what's what's not to want in every picture you ever do in that family, right? So when I set up have students set up still lives, we set up still lives to color schemes. We don't just set up still lives and to draw. We set the, and we don't just set them up to values. We set them up with color and with color in mind from the very beginning. And uh, 
yeah, and then there's that search for, you know, developing the skill of articulating what you set up. <laughs> so then here's William Merritt Chase. Uh, and um, it's, you know, it's rather similar, quite similar. He was also one of those guys who showed with... Uh, with the uh, with the ten American painters uh, doing and uh, I think Hassam even and several others in Boston back in the turn of the whatever that century was or so it must have been a little bit later than that uh, but um, they caused such a nice reaction in New York uh, but um, yeah but you can see again the orientation is not to draw outlines of objects anywhere near as much as to is to handle the ensemble of the entire thing. Greens talking to greens to blues to, you know, colors to colors, you know, uh, uh, in that very way. Uh, and, and a study like this wouldn't have done the same way with the idea of, uh, of distributing notes and then searching for the rest of the notes and, and minimizing drawing for a while. Uh, not, not meaning you minimize all drawing, but you minimize the drawing for its own sake. You don't do it actually for its own sake. You do it as a function of, of having its part, rather, uh, uh, in its time as the process evolves, and uh, which is very characteristic of Impressionist thinking. Yeah, and this one is a nice one for a start. Uh, I don't, this, is, this one is one that suggests to me that he doesn't start with as much uh, uh, discipline. He winds up doing many things when he should, seems like he should do fewer. Like how many things do you actually need down here to be able to get more, enough stuff to close out this corner? Uh, how many fence posts do you actually need back here when you still have a blank area down? Here. So it's just the kind of questions that do come up when you're working with a disciplined mind, uh, 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 eye orientation. Laura Coombs Hills was Boston School trained, and uh, she was also a miniaturist, uh, and I had one of those. I, for some reason, don't have it here, but, but her pastels are stunning. There's a couple of these on uh, the ones, the purple one, that you're seeing on the left in front of you that are just ridiculously marvelous. Um, and uh, so, uh, but they show a, they're not just stroke, stroke, stroke. Um, different people have used pastel in different ways, and, and, and these guys included, but sometimes people would uh, use pigments and they would just have them powdered, whereas, whereas and not in a stick necessarily. And they would use their fingers and, 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 and mess around with the colors and then stick it on with a smudge. And uh, others of us, I'm one of those guys who likes to put it on because of my earliest training with broken marks, but I have no problem with sticking my thumb in it and pulling a nice, a nice unity uh, and, and reworking it. Uh, there's so many nice things you can do. Um, this is so much easier to do though when you're working from the visual order, in my view, uh, when you're working um, you know, ocularly, as Meldrum likes to say. Uh, but yeah, you can see opportunities to do things like that down in areas like this. But there's no demand to do it. In the case of Degas, you wonder if he would have done it. And I, there's not, I don't, I'd have to look again to see if there's any evidence of anything except broken color in his, um, in his uh, pastels. But he certainly does end with that as a unifying look, you know, the, 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 the weaving of strokes. Uh, now, I'm just going to show you Bracken because I worked with him early in my career, and a lot of people in Boston did, uh, in New York, I mean, did. Uh, you know, it's, this is where you get really frustrated for the lack of drawing teaching down there. And I think he was an offspring of, of the, uh, maybe the Sawyers uh, down there in the, uh, at the uh, Art Students League. And this is construction drawing. Uh, I love Brackman and I, everything he taught. I mean, the, the basic things that he showed me are, are still used. But, but the, to me, it's just such a frustrating thing to see, you know, construction drawing uh, exhausting you uh, so quickly and bringing so little. Uh, but that's, you know, uh, he still had a striking orientation around effects, around light effects, as you can see here. You know, he's, he's, very, he's very aware of light, and he's the, one, he's the one that introduced me to light. And I am eternally grateful. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bragman. Daniel Green was one of his students, and I studied with him as well uh, for a little while. Uh, and uh, and I would suggest that his orientation he he, he began to, to work more on uh, well he still worked with construction drawing from everything I saw at one point I asked him about why he didn't draw longer lines more frequently because I saw a beautiful thing he'd done and he said you can't do it or something rather like that and I and I don't 
I don't find that I agree with that. But on the other hand, he doesn't. He does have a, a far more of an orientation around construction drawing, and an eventual uh, line. I think you. I think you can see in most work uh, with people who do that, you can see evidence uh, of that. One of my favorite of the New York painters when I was down there was uh, Aaron Schickler. Uh, uh, his. Uh, his sense of light, that's what I'm particularly talking about, was was really nice. Um, it ap does appear to be uh, uh, oriented around something rather rather like what the Boston School was thinking. It does it does appear also to be heavier on drawing in the older way, but um, uh, and it's not, I mean, you know, but but still, it, he's a nice example of uh, of what I consider to be the better work that was happening in Pastel down in, in New York. And this is my own work, and I'm, this, I show you this picture of Chloe uh, in the middle because it shows you, this work has started from the spots, but it shows you you can evolve a work all the way up to a finesse, to a, what you might call a finessed classic <laughs> finish uh, in large part without, you know, starting with broken color, starting with spots of color, and starting without drawing. So uh, for people who wonder about whether the Boston School of Methods which are visual order methods can be uh, can be pushed, and I should say even impressionist methods can be pushed. Well, mine can, mine can be pushed. This one's obviously been pushed so much so that it's probably more precise and articulate than any of the earlier academic drawings I showed you, and clarity, s sharpness of, of line, uh, all in combination with the visual order, you know. And then, of course, what I've did in this one here was I I, I built in these. These, uh, this is a star being born, and here in the background from the, the, the from the Hubble telescope. So none of this is from the photograph, but but these guys are. <laughs> this this area is definitely. And then there's nebula. All these things are so the sequence on her clothes aren't sequins at all. They're they're amusing me as sequins, but they're actually um, um, uh, various uh, examples of nebula from the from the shots out of the. Uh, out of that wonderful uh, telescope, and of course some interpretation of it, since nobody actually knows what color those things are really. So, um, uh, but it shows you how much you can do, even in the uh, even in the uh, imaginative way, uh, when you have that information. The rest of what I'm showing you here, though, by the way, is also again, it's, this is just visual effects. Uh, driving down, driving down uh, Plymouth Road, there or something, or the clouds in the sky hilltop, little red smudge of something over on the left side. It could be fire, it could be light, cloud. And my job was to memorize these. You get one blank, you know, you might you might be lucky to get 15 seconds. And all these, because I'm driving cars, I think in every one of them except the bottom right one. So you see these effects, you blink on them, you try to maintain. So one of the things beautiful about pastel is you can actually use it in a quick, so uh, in, a, in a very quick, uh, to, to knock out three or four basic notes and, and see if that's going to work, you know, in ways that don't intimidate you, like having to get out your paints and having to worry about brush cleaning and all the rest of that stuff. So uh, it's very forgiving that way. Here's one out the rear view window of my car, uh, something I see frequently and it intrigues me. But this one was a very particular one that I actually felt I could do. I could actually memorize that one. Uh, I did say there's a memory studies, right? So I would draw these, I would see these in the evening and in the morning, in the daylight in my studio, I would I would uh, uh, I would paint them in pastel, and so these are all really tiny. I don't know if the biggest one might be four inches across, or maybe this one is four inches high, maybe five inches high. So they're very tiny. Uh, this is uh, from my yard, some trees in the in the in the early winter, and the skyline and all those things, and uh, and that's again memory uh, stuff, but. Pastel is very nice this way. What you can suggest and not have to articulate enormously it makes it a really nice sketch medium. And Adam, I'm just telling you all these things. I, <laughs> I'm going to get out of this, but um, but that's that's the basic idea. Uh, uh, Vivian, uh, and you can find more. Go online, um, uh, look up every name you know uh, in the uh, field. Uh, I, I don't honestly know. I've never tried one of these searches where you can go online and to actually f type in pastelist uh, and get what you want. But um, uh, so, but that's that's the underlying story. And so the question you wanted to talk about, the other thing you want to talk about is what's the difference between oil painting and uh, and uh, pastel and the way and the treatment. And 
there really isn't one. I mean, we use a sanded board when we're when we're doing. Uh, I do when we're doing pastels, and uh, and but the approach is exactly the same. One of the things I really like about what we do is that it does not change because you're indoors. It doesn't change because you're doing a portrait versus a still life. It doesn't change because you're because you're uh, 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 switching to from oil to pastel. Everything you do is exactly the same and works ridiculously well, right? So, and I am talking about the orientation around color and spots, light effects, and, and arabesque, the things you've heard me talk about here. So it, the, the visual approach to this thing is so, is so uh, it gives you so much mastery. And uh, it's so versatile that there's, it makes to me absolutely no sense. And I have done, I think I've done just everything in messing around in my career, trying to find best ways. So uh, I would really encourage you to uh, don't think if you want to, if you've only been working with pastels, that you can't rather quickly, I would think, transition to oil and certainly the other way around. It might be easier the other way around. Another when I was a student, Gamel actually was, uh, and I don't remember precisely why, but he asked me if I would like to, to bring pastels in and use pastels. Uh, and maybe it's because he'd seen some pastels by me. But, uh, but, he ha but, he, but, he, but, he, but he seemed to have an idea that it's easier to transition from drawing with a drawing stick, you know, with a colored stick, uh, meaning a pastel, uh, to transition into color with a drawing implement in your hand. Now, that's just me reading into it, uh, but that was the best I could make of what he was trying to get me to do. But the fun thing is, though, that it does keep you, if you're an early student of painting, it keeps you out of some of the oily problems that just start, you know, you make messes and you don't know why you're making messes, but you're taking yourself so far away from the subject of hitting the note uh, or of, of the drawing because of it that it's understandable that you might, uh, that you might want to keep it simple by just making us a... a, a a color, making color in an additive way, um, which is what you saw in one of my uh, images there with the, uh, uh, I guess it's probably on the screen now, the, um, the um, study for the uh, Cupid still life. So, okay, well, that's, that's what I got for you today. Um, Vivian, thanks for the question. I look forward to seeing you very soon. And, uh, and please subscribe, share, uh, etc. And uh, keep on coming in with the questions, um, conversations. I much appreciate it. I much enjoy doing it. Talk to you later.